So good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank for giving me the opportunity to share with you our results at this press briefing. So um, our project was basically focused on uh, the role of iron overload uh, in inflammation, and in particular on macrophage function. Uh, here are my disclosures. So this, most of this project is supported by Novartis. So uh, as I mentioned, basically we were interested to study um, uh, how iron overload uh, affect the response of the macrophage. Uh, this is because the macrophage is a very interesting cell that plays basically a dual role. On one side, uh, it is uh, involved uh, in iron metabolism in the sense that uh, the macrophage performs erythrophagocytosis of senescent red blood cell and therefore uh, recycle hemoglobin derived iron and handle uh, a lot of iron. And on the other side, of course, the macrophage is a key immune cell, so is responsible also for the clearance and killing of pathogens. So uh, basically, uh, what we know is that several conditions, uh, several pathologic conditions so show uh, iron overload in the macrophage. Uh, one example is uh, our uh, anemic uh, conditions such as thalassemia and myelodysplastic syndrome, which are uh, where anemia is cured through transfusion. So transfusion produces an enhanced rate of phagocytosis through the macrophage, and therefore the macrophage develop iron overload. Uh, additionally, also in sickle cell disease, uh, the hemolysis of the sickle red blood cells leads to him uh, releasing the circulation into the circulation and therefore him accumulates into the macrophage. Uh, and also uh, in anemia treated with intravenous iron formulation, this iron formulation firstly targets the macrophage and therefore also in this condition the macrophage accumulates. Iron. And so what we were interested in was uh, to study how iron accumulation in those different pathologic conditions causes inflammation eventually through the activation of the macrophage. And uh, through a number of uh, in vitro and in vivo experiments, we basically concluded that uh, uh, transfusion on one side uh, have a suppressive effect on inflammation because uh, during uh, upon transfusion, the macrophage is highly engaged in erythrophagocytosis and therefore uh, its inflammatory response uh, is reduced, is suppressed. So less cytokines are produced by the macrophages and these eventually lead in transfused patients to uh, the development of infection which actually clinical data support the concept that the infection often occur in transfused patients. Uh, so uh, when, uh, therefore, infection entered the system, the reduced uh, pro-inflammatory response of the macrophage and the reduced release of cytokines eventually causes an overwhelming infection leading to organ failure and also potentially to death. And instead, when we analyze the effect of free heme and diagon, that is generated, as we said, in sickle cell anemia or that uh, is provided through intravenous iron formulation administration, what we discover is that what happened at the level of the macrophage is completely the opposite. So heme and iron exert a pro-inflammatory effect on the macrophage, um, leading to increased release of inflammatory cytokines, which then directly damage the, uh, for example, hepatocytes in sickle cell disease, activates hepatic stella cells. This leads to a Accumulation of collagen and fibrosis, and therefore to immune mediated injury. And when eventually also infection occurs in this condition, the sterile inflammation uh, produced by human diagon goes on top, basically, of the pathogen driven inflammation. And this leads to a further exacerbation of uh, the pro inflammatory activation of the macrophage, and therefore to a bigger uh, potentially extended immune mediated tissue injury. And so, basically, altogether, our data suggests that different iron sources, despite all causing iron overload at the level of the macrophage, they uh, uh, induce a completely different response uh, at the level of these cells. Uh, and therefore, whether transfusion on one side causes an immune suppression of the inflammatory response of the macrophage, eventually rendering a transfused patient more susceptible to infection, on the other hand, uh, free him and iron causes steroid inflammation and immune mediated tissue damage in a disease, uh, a sickle, uh, sickle cell disease, for example. What we have been able also to show is that uh, we can. Uh, uh, 
apply some molecules for therapeutic purposes to reduce this uh, effect induced by iron, uh, different iron sources. And we have demonstrated that in sickle cell disease, and when we apply intravenous iron formulation in anemia, we can provide IM scavengers, such as hemopexin, or uh, uh, iron carriers, such as transferrin, to blunt the sterile inflammation induced by HIF, IM, and iron. And we are currently investigating whether similar administering chelators, we can remove intracellular iron from the macrophage upon transfusion, and we can alleviate the suppression of the immune response of the macrophage and therefore reduce the susceptibility to infection of transfused patients.